you guys have been loving my whiskey wood builds so much so that you have asked me to do more. So today we're doing plywood DIYs and normally I would have steered clear of this because I don't have a table saw to cut plywood down. Well, today I've got some projects for you that you can make easily with plywood with minimal tools so no table saw required. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share all things DIY and budget home decor. So if you're already a craft buddy, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're not a craft buddy yet, no worries. Just hit subscribe down below so you can DIY along with us each week. I want to give a huge thank you to Glowforge for sponsoring today's video. If you follow me on my community tab and see those posts, you saw that they recently unveiled the first ever craft laser, which is called the Glowforge Aura. It's a lot more craft room friendly, in my opinion. And so I will be sharing a little bit later on in the video Video, more about the machine and the first projects that I've done to share some inspo with you guys and see if it would be a good addition to your craft room. But first, let's go grab some plywood and get making. The great thing about this first project is you don't need any power tools at all. We're going to head to the handy panels, which are just sheets of plywood, and we're going to go for a square one because we're going to dupe something that looks like this $500 pottery barn piece. So you could easily go with the OSB handy panel, but I decided to do one grade up and it kind of looks like underlayment for floors. I'm also going to grab some one by two scraps and frame out that piece. And I'm using a miter box because you don't need power tools for this project. Remember, I'm going to cut two pieces to either side, which is about 24 inches. And then I'm going to cut two pieces to overlap each edge. We're going to sand all of the framing lumber as well as the back of the sign. And we're also going to stain those as well as the back of the sign in the color provincial. Now here's where the fun starts. We're gonna grab some of this spackling. You can use whatever spackling. I like this dry dex because it goes on pink and dries white. And I'm gonna use some gloves and cover the entire thing to have kind of a pretty thin coat. I wanna cover up the wood grain, which I usually don't wanna do, but for this style we do. I'm gonna rub it on, do my best karate kid, wax on, wax off. And when everything is covered, I am going to take my hand and smooth it all out. I left it out in the sun for about an hour and you know it's dry when it turns from pink to white. It's already starting here. Once my base coat was completely dry, I took this chalk paint in the color sandstone and covered the base. I didn't want a completely white sign like the inspiration. I kind of wanted to make it look like beach waves. So once that was painted as my sand color, I took a pencil and created some wave forms that I wanted to start in the top left corner. The goal here is to make it look like waves are rolling into a beach. So I'm grabbing some more of that spackling as well as this small little art putty knife to create the tops of the white caps as well as the bubbles that you see behind the waves. So what I'm doing is adding it with the little knife and then I am going through with a foam brush, just a regular old paintbrush, pulling it back and that is what is going to really make it look like a wave. So the technique here is to just take some spackling, push it on the line to give it like a little bit of a uh, little raised section and then we're going to push it on back and the thinner you're spackling the quicker it's going to dry so those thicker kind of white caps are going to take a little bit but you can see the ends are already starting to dry out on me so once i got a design that i was happy with then i let it completely dry and i love how this turned out with the white effect now you could go back through with some additional colors if you wanted to paint it, but I liked it as it was. So I just used my nail gun to apply the border and you could easily do the same thing with a hammer and some finished nails. You don't need a nail gun for that. I just wanted to save time, but you could easily do that by hand and voila. I like the slight nod to nautical without it being too beachy and I'm in love. And you can't beat the fact that mine was under 20 bucks compared to the inspo of $500. As an avid crafter who loves working with wood, I have looked into getting a Glowforge machine a few times, and each time it boils down to the machine itself as well as the cost was just way too big for me. So when Glowforge reached out to me in the spring to let me know that they were launching a new machine to help make the power of a laser more accessible to hobby crafters like us, I knew I had to check it out. That machine is called the Glowforge Aura. It's a small lightweight machine that allows you to cut, engrave, and score tons of materials with the precision of a laser. Now I knew right away that I wanted to make some projects with plywood, but it also works with wood hardwood and wood veneer, plus things like acrylic, leather, iron-on, peel and stick vinyl, paper, fabric, and more. Materials up to a quarter inch thick can be cut with this machine, and you can score and engrave materials that are thicker than a quarter inch. 
Now I'm gonna cover the basics today and share some of the projects that I made as an absolute beginner to help you decide if it's something that you wanna add to your craft room. The box was light and setup was easy. It took about 10 minutes. You just remove the packaging stuff, you plug it in, and then you either vent the exhaust hose out a window, or in my case, I have the Glowforge personal filter that they also sent me, and it traps 99.9% .9 of particles when you're cutting, which is really nice because I don't have to vent it out the window if I don't want to. Once you pair the device, it will automatically turn on when you hit the button to print your project, so you don't have to worry about any other settings for that. And whether it's out the window or through this optional filter, proper ventilation is crucial when you're working with a laser to keep you safe. Right off the bat, I used some files that I found on Etsy to make some fun fall earrings. To create, I uploaded the SVG file, I set the art to cut and then engrave, and then you open the lid, put your materials in, hit print on the Glowforge app, and it's gonna calculate your projected project time. Once that's all done, you press the flashing button and it's off and running. There's an eight megapixel camera under the lid called Aura Vision, and that scans the logo on the proof grade materials that I'm putting in here, and that tells the software exactly what to cut. That's huge for a beginner like me because messing with settings can be a whole nother ball game, but you can also use non-Glowforge materials in this machine as well. I just haven't done that yet. It also gives you a real-time view of the materials with that camera, so you can place your design right in your desired cut location. When that was all done, I removed the masking that's on the wood. It's kind of like a paper transfer tape and it protects the wood when it's in the machine. I finished them off with just some acrylic paint mixed with water and some earring hardware. I think these are so cute, super fun, and I'll be rocking these this Halloween. Now using the same process, I cut out these fun 3D Sanderson scissors. I also got this file from Etsy and it was super easy to cut, glue, and paint. I used super glue to attach them and Posca paint pens for the details and I think they turned out so fun and honestly I would never be able to do something like this without a laser machine. Now up next, I wanted to make a logo sign for my craft room. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my notepad project using a similar file. Now I created the SVG background with craft supplies as well as my logo. And I set the wood round to score and then cut the circle and my blue acrylic to cut whiskey and wit. The main question I had off the bat is, is this machine just like a big Glowforge, but smaller? And the answer is eh, yes and no. While they are both laser cutters, they have different types of lasers. The bigger machine runs on a CO2 laser that is faster and more powerful. This Aura machine uses a diode laser. While still powerful, it's slower and a little bit weaker than those larger Glowforges, so you can run into some items you can cut and score, etc., on the bigger machines that you can't do on the Aura. One of the biggest differences that I asked about on one of my first calls with Glowforge is acrylic. So with this machine, clear acrylic, some whites also translucent, give the machine a hard time with how it reads through the materials. So just keep that in mind if you're planning on cutting a bunch of clear acrylic, this is not your machine. Now to assemble my sign, I used the remainder of the acrylic piece to line up my letters like a puzzle and to transfer them, I used painter's tape and popped them out with the tape still on. Then I applied the glue and stuck it right to my sign. That helped me get everything straight, kind of like transfer tape. How fun is this? I can't wait to try more projects with acrylic because it is a new medium to me and I've been having a blast. Ever since I started looking into Glowforges, I knew I wanted to make a 3D map like this one. So I went on a hunt for a tutorial. I found a tremendously great video on YouTube by Kim and Garrett Make It. So I will link those down below if you're interested in making something like this. But once I got the file created, I went over to my Aura and got to work. So it took about 20 minutes for me to create this file and then I got it loaded into the Glowforge app. I sized and cut mine to 10 and a half inches square and it had four layers. I painted the bottom blue to allow for the river to peek through the second layer that was scored and cut to allow for the ancillary streets. Both of those first two layers were maple plywood and then I grabbed dark walnut plywood to cut the main roads and then finally the top layer with the Naperville, Illinois and the logo of our alma mater. Assembly of this was super easy with this Loctite super glue, and I added a couple of pins for the places that we met, graduated, got engaged, and where Finn was born, denoted by those black little pins. 
Honestly, this turned out way better than I expected, and I am so happy that I can make more of these with Aura for gifts or other places that are special to us. Now, one caveat is that it did take me three plus hours to do all of these layers, and that's with scoring the streets versus engraving, which would have taken me nine plus hours. So like I said, the laser isn't necessarily slow, but it is slower than what you're used to if you're thinking about a big laser machine. Now, I feel it was worth the wait, but it is a key point to keep in mind. So what if you're saying, Whitney, I don't design my own files. No worries. Just like other design tools, Glowforge offers a premium membership to upgrade, which gives you more design tools and projects to help you get started via the Glowforge catalog. The catalog is full of ready to print aura friendly designs made by other makers. So overall, this machine is best suited for casual hobby crafters looking to add a laser to their craft space. This machine is not for those looking to start a big laser business or make larger projects like you can with the larger Glowforge machines. The Aura with its diode laser is less than what you'd be looking at to buy a large Glowforge machine, which is great because it makes it accessible to more people. But what you want to do is make sure that you check all of the specs for yourself to see if it would be a good fit for the materials you want to cut, the projects you want to do, and for your own craft space. If you've got any questions for me, be sure to leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. So bottom line, throughout the process, I have had a learning curve. I've had some frustrations, some miscuts, but overall I have really enjoyed practicing with a laser, getting to know it, and seeing all the different things that are possible when you have a laser in your craft room. So I'm really excited to make more projects and then also share them with you guys. Let me know down in the comments if you've got questions about the machine or if you already have a laser and want me to share more laser projects with you guys going into the holidays. But for now, let's hop back into those plywood projects because this next one is super fun. Up next, I'm going to show you how I made this awesome record player stand. I have had this in a closet for so many years and I wanted to get it out and use it, especially because I got a new Taylor Swift vinyl. So this one's actually going to be made with laminated lumber or edge glued pine. And I grabbed two of these one by 16 by four foot pieces. This plan was inspired by Shanty to Chic, but I had to update theirs because they used a table saw. So what I grabbed is two of those 16 by four foot, as well as a scrap piece of one by six from my house. Now to get the cuts without a table saw, we're gonna use our circular saw, but we're going to use this Craig rip cut attachment. This is a great thing to add to your tool bench if you wanna be cutting these large pieces. You just attach with a screw the pieces, slide your saw onto this guide, set it to the size. So here I'm cutting 16 inches and you use it to glide right across the wood. You hold the saw with your one hand, guide with the other hand, and it is a fairly easy process. I have never cut with it until this day and Alex showed me and it was pretty easy. Once I got my three 16 inch pieces and my two 24 inch pieces, I'm going to add pocket holes to the bottom of my 16 inch pieces, three on either side, and then I'm gonna sand everything down. Now it's time to assemble. So I laid down one of my 24 inch pieces and measured about five and a half inches from the top to a lot for the back of my shelf, which you'll see in just a second. I'm gonna add wood glue and apply it where it needs to go. And then I'm gonna use one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to attach it because we did three quarter inch pocket holes, or at least I thought. You guys, I make mistakes too. I accidentally did one and a half inch pocket holes and they were way too deep. So I had to go back through and do them again at the three quarter inch. So, you know, we all make mistakes. So once that was fixed and I got my thing five inches from the top, I'm going to flip it over and add the other wall, which is your other 24 inch piece. Again, five and a half inches from the top, make sure everything's square and we're gonna put our three pocket hole screws into there to attach it. Then I am going to make sure that my pocket holes are facing out and add the bottom flush to the bottom of the two pieces. We're doing the pocket holes on the bottom so you don't see them. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to add a little bit more wood glue to my shelf and add that in. It was about four inches from the top shelf. Then you're gonna be looking at something like this. And I decided to take a piece of scrap one by six, which is about five and a half inches actually, and cut it down and add pocket holes so that it fits. It's about 16 inches wide. We're gonna add some more wood glue and then screw that all in across the back. If you're using a one by four or a one by three or something different than what I'm doing here, you're gonna wanna allot for that when you add your top shelf. So just make sure that's as far down as your back piece so it all lines up. 
Then it's time to finish it and add some hardware. So I'm gonna use this Minwax stain in the color Provincial. It's kind of like if Dark Walnut and Early American came together, which I'm really liking lately. And then once that's completely dry, I got these legs off of Amazon. They are the same ones as Shani to Chic, but they did five and a half inch legs, I think. And I decided to do seven inch legs. So overall, this is very similar to their plans, but I just updated it so you don't have to use a table saw. And it also is a little bit higher to sit next to chairs in our living room. I love the black matte hardware and I added these record displays. They're supposed to go the other way, but I put two in there so it acted as like a shelf in there, something I didn't have to build. My little Crosley record player fits perfect in the top. It even has enough room for me to open it and put a record on there and play it there. I really want to expand my collection and now that I have a place to actually have my record player out instead of having it in a closet will help me do that. This would also make a great printer stand or you can even pop your Cricut Joy on the top. And this last one, I've been tagged in similar things like this on TikTok, Instagram so many times, and they are these yard cutout Hocus Pocus sisters. So back in the plywood aisle, we're gonna get some more of that OSB handy panel. I'm grabbing one of these 6.99 two by four sheets, and I'm gonna get four of them. Now I know there's three sisters, I'll show you in a minute. Now I bought these templates from Etsy and it's all three sisters. You print them out whatever size you want. You could do anywhere from one foot to eight feet, I believe. They're all numbered and marked. So you just go stick them together and then you cut out the template to add it to your wood. If you have a projector, you could do that as well. I do not have a projector. So I decided to go this route. Now trying to get a four by eight sheet of plywood to my house would have been a nightmare. So these are great because my four foot little Sanderson sisters fit perfect for me to cut them out. And these are so much easier to fit inside of an SUV or even a car rather than trying to get that big sheet of plywood because really the only way you're doing that easily is if you have a truck, which again, we don't have. So I went through and traced the two sisters that were all one piece. And then for Winnie's sleeves, I had to do half on one sheet, half on the other sheet. And I just marked where I lined her up so I knew where to start on each one. So basically it's kind of a line down the center. I used a book to hold it down so it didn't blow away on me. And once everything was stenciled on there, it was time to go to work with my jigsaw. Nothing special is needed here, just a little bit of patience because you can't really make these sharps of turns with a jigsaw. So you kind of have to cut a little bit, take a chunk out like I did here, take another chunk out so you can get a good angle and continue on. To cut out Sarah and Mary's little armholes, I took a one inch paddle bit, put a two by four scrap underneath the plywood and just drilled a nice quarter size hole in there that allowed me to stick my jigsaw in there and kind of cut at an angle. So then that way I could get those pieces out so their arms looked like they were bent. Then I give everything a quick sand with my power sander. You could also do this by hand if you just have a jigsaw. Then it was time to add some paint. So I went with this Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover that was good for indoor and outdoor. And I rolled on paint to both of them. I made sure to get the front, the back, and the sides. Now, if you remember our friend Winifred Sanderson, she is cut in half currently. So we are going to do some operation and put her back together. We just need some wood glue down the center. I pushed it together and then I used some more wood glue on a scrap piece of one by two. I had left over from our first sign in this video. Wood glue, nailed it down with some brad nails. You can also screw it in, but I went with the one by two to cover up the gap just so then that way there wasn't going to be like a line of green from these lights through Winnie. And at this point, you've got two options. You can either leave them as is, just as the silhouettes, or you can put lights behind them to make them glow. And you guys know I was going big. I was not going to not make them glow. So I got these lights from Amazon and I attached them to the back carefully with half inch staples in a staple gun. You wanna make sure they're half inch just so you don't sever your lights because I accidentally did that by accidentally grabbing a quarter inch row of staples and I busted my purple lights. So I ended up adding the backs while I waited for my Amazon order to come the next couple days with more purple lights. I used some rebar and these plumbing brackets so I could just put the rebar into the ground and slide my individual sisters right onto it. The rebar helped hold it up. I couldn't find four foot rebar. I'm gonna have to go back when my hardware store gets it in stock, but I would recommend the four foot instead of the two foot. 
Now I set it up in my yard and I tried a few different areas, but nowhere was giving me the glow I wanted until I leaned them up against this wall, which is my garage. So you can see it as you come up the pathway to our house and this glow is just so much better. I recommend putting them up against a wall so that can reflect the light out because if there's nothing behind it, you're just gonna lose a lot of that light and they're gonna look dull. Put them against the wall and that's what makes them the showstopper. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video inspired you to get DIYing with plywood, whether that be via a laser or with the tools that you have at home. Huge thank you to Glowforge for sponsoring this video. All the information that you'll wanna know about the Aura is down below. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.